The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Our top stories this week. Uh, last week, <laughs> saying the proposal deadline to send a tutorial to ALIFE 20 was January 17th, which would be this week. I double checked, uh, with the organizer, Juniper Lovato, and no, that was a mistake. It is indeed February. Okay. Uh, um, also, uh, last week we had this crazy thing where I did the red key master, the key master in a red case. It wouldn't seem to do the touch screen unless I fussed with the, uh, corner screws more than I expected to. Uh, watching <laughs> the video, uh, uh, last week, I did notice one thing that was a little bit strange was that the, the key, the screw holes for mounting the board, the beagle bone onto my circuit board, uh, I hadn't actually screwed them in on the, Red Keymaster, uh, uh, it, uh, they aren't strictly necessary because there's so many pins that the board gets held down really solid, but I wondered if that was it. This is what the Red Keymaster ended up looking like last week. It's pitiful little red buttons. I disassembled the whole thing again. I, and indeed the screws were not there. I put the screws in, uh, uh all four corners, put it back together again, and actually it worked a little better, but it didn't work 100%. So I'm not clear whether that was really the story or not, but I, I still had to back off on the, uh, the case screws more than I expected. I, I, I do wonder if it's possible that there's some little crud, uh, uh, you know, a little plastic glob that's pushing down on the, uh, circuit on the touchscreen, the resistive touchscreen is the kind that it is. I'll have to check that in the future. But at the moment, the Red Keymaster has a red case, uh, uh, and it is working, so we'll see. Uh, keeping an eye on the world of uh, academic hardware, uh, computer hardware, uh, Ross Shulman and the Gitter uh, uh, put a link to this uh, Celerity uh, network on chip, took a look at it. 496 cores, and they're arranged in a 2D grid. They have nearest neighbor com connection as well as routing abilities. There was a lot to like about this thing. I mean, this is an academic, you know, research uh, project. Uh, sponsored by DARPA under a bunch of different uh, uh, universities, but it's got these rocket cores, these five big uh, processing cores, and then these hundreds and hundreds uh, of these little RISC-V vanilla cores, uh, each of which has its own instruction memory, data memory. Those are a little bit tight, but it might be enough that you can actually do something fairly cool with. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, it, it looks like a tile. They call it a tile. Uh, each one of those little dots is, you know, instruction and data cache and a CPU and everything right there, network routing and so forth. <sighs> it's always disappointing. Uh, um, the uh, going off of the grid of little 496 cores, it only goes out through one edge. So if you wanted to get from this guy, just to get to the big cores, let alone getting to another chip, uh, uh, adjacent chip, you actually have to bottleneck through one side. Because again, as always, as the cases that with the computer hardware that we see, you know, prioritizing indefinite scalability is never what they're about. So, you know, do we have to have our own 20 million DARPA program at some point? Well, who knows? It always breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to like about this thing, but, you know, there's no way. Uh, well, who knows? Uh, uh, but they threw away their their geometric 2D uh, bandwidth uh, by necking it down to just one edge. Also, uh, um, uh, uh, the Scientist magazine uh, online, I'm not sure if it's in print as well, uh, a, a paper came out, uh, came out of embargo today, I'm sorry, Monday, uh, coming out in, in, in PAS, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, uh, about using uh, uh, evolutionary <laughs> techniques of for soft robots to design robots that are supposed to move, and then using frog cells that were, are teased apart and glued together 
together and stacked up to ma- to mimic the shape that the computer evolution had picked and then seeing how well it works and uh so these guys wrote up a, a lot a lot of places covered it uh the scientist was one of the covers why do i mention that one specifically well so you know <clears throat> this work uh was done by uh, michael levin who was the guy that did all that crazy planaria stuff that i talked about a few months ago at the uh sfi workshop on biological computation and living systems whatever that was called that's michael levin's the same guy and the other one uh josh bongard is another Another one of the a life guys doing more of the evolution side these guys got together and did this you know crazy stuff in that was reported in pnas along with their students the reason i mention it is uh, uh Emma yazinski the author of this uh review this uh news uh, thing about uh the paper got in touch with me over the weekend and i contributed a blurb <laughs> Still, the work is in its earliest stages. Uh, computer science. Blah, 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 blah. This is a marvelous proof of concept demonstrating how the artificial evolution of mathematical soft robots can guide the design of the functional biology system. I, I close the piece. Uh, um, you know, these things all have to have the same format. You got to get a reaction from somebody who's not involved from the work with the work, and that was me. And they have to, you know, say something about the limitations of the thing and so forth. So I, I ended up becoming the guy. Normally, uh, when I get these requests i never respond to them quick enough and they go on and then pick somebody else or whatever it is uh tried to do harder uh um and you know turned around some comments that was the first sentence of like three paragraphs that i wrote for you know it's fine it's the way it works i was giving them material to write with so uh, i'm a big pundit now <laughs> so that happened uh, uh all right <clears throat> and uh <sighs> I've been thinking a lot about uh, programming because I've been doing a lot of programming, especially for the the bond stuff, the chemical bond uh, things, which I'm trying to do for a life 2020. Uh, and the thing that started to come through to me is that I want to think about this s- programming. I want to think about creating systems, uh, computational systems, living systems, as not as being sort of arbitrary pointer instruction set jumping all over random access memory, but in terms of phases or turns or sequencing, and that the act of creating something is an act of sequencing stuff rather than general arbitrary programming in loops and running around and jumping up and down and so on. So my slogan is system sequencing is greater than computer programming. In the background image there, it, uh, that's a, a jacquard loom, uh, that was, you know, sort of emblematic of the early days of programming where you'd have, uh, uh you know, these cards that would step through a, a little reader that would have pins and, and for each one that had a hole in it, you'd get a thread that would go up or down or whatever it was. And once you had programmed these cards like a player piano, uh, you could weave extremely complicated, uh, um, uh, p- fabrics uh, on the Jacquard loom. And so this is the idea of sequencing. And I'm not completely sure I understand it all, but really what it comes down to... Is, oh, I, I lost... My, I had some notes here. Let's, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so uh, from one point of view, in a computer, every time you in- execute an instruction, the lowest level, you know, there is a sequence there. There are phases there. You load the instruction, you increment the program counter, you decode the instruction, and so on. There's a whole pipeline of things that are going on for every single instruction. So that's not quite what I mean by sequencing, uh, and that's why I'm calling it the master sequence, that, that the idea is you figure out what the system is supposed to do, and you express that whole behavior in terms of a sequence of fundamental steps at whatever level is appropriate the key is to to keep doing it sequences at higher levels rather than just saying well we've got a sequence for each instruction and then above that who knows uh you can go around in loops you can do function calls recursions never come back the the advantage of building an explicit sequence with phases is that you can have touchstones when something goes wrong you can fall back to the beginning of the previous sequence 
happens. If that uh, self-check doesn't pass, you can fall back to the beginning of the previous one and so forth. And that's without necessarily having gotten there from any particular path. When we take deterministic execution, we think we have to do each exact step in the sequence. And if we miss it, you know, who knows? We're completely lost. But if we have these landmarks, these beacons, these phases uh, at every appropriate level, then it gives us a place to go. It gives us an anchor. And that's why sequencing is better than programming. And that for robustness, that's one of the things that I want to keep in mind. And I think, you know, I want to, you know, what do you think? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Am I completely nuts? The idea is just as if you want as much synchronization as needed to do the problem, but no more, rather than completely assuming a totally synchronized universe up front, the same thing is you, you want the flexibility. So like in splat, for example, there's a sequence of steps, the given, the vote, the check and the change, the four phases that happen in each time. And those are important because it limits the flexibility of what can happen in an event. Sometimes that's aggravating when you're being a programmer. And the art of doing the programming language design is to be able to have more complicated things happen during the givens, during the check voting, checking, and changing to get more done. Uh, but you still have this fundamental rhythm that's going, the sequence that's going over and over and over again. And that wants to carry up into the higher level. So this week I was working on uh, the bond stuff and trying to get a clean design, a clean software design for doing bonds in fairly general ways. And I'm thinking that's going to be the scientific submission for the ALIFE 2020 paper. Hopefully we'll have a little more news about that next week you know at this point i'm still doing infrastructure stuff uh, uh but it's looking like it's got potential uh, uh but all of these things just keep coming over again the boot sequence that i talked about a few weeks ago going all the way back to ccr in the 90s and then the boot sequence uh for system d and all these guys it's a sequencing uh the uh, single event window has all these phases in it the intertile connection intertile event stuff which i was also working on this week has this sequence it's a state machine, but it's it's not just a rat's nest of spaghetti, everything pointing at everything. There's this axis of progress, the sequence that it's going through, that when things go wrong, it collapses back uh, systematically, and, and bonds that I just mentioned. So... System sequencing, so I stick system in there to get out just the idea of not just teeny little loops, but at all scales. System sequencing is greater than computer programming. It is now six weeks to the scientific deadline. I'm going to go after clean bonds. Uh, um, we'll see what happens as far as uh, getting... You know, folks, I, I'm, I'm really hoping folks will be able to, you know, there's, I, I know there's a bunch of people out there who have played with Ulam, who have played with Splat, uh, uh, and that's great. I mean, I also really love the folks that are, uh, like the Sandboy Saga, Luke Wilson, uh, are you tracing his stuff? He, he's doing 3D Splat stuff. It's very cool. Uh, uh, and in fact, some of the things that he's done in his programming language design, uh, I would think about stealing for future versions of Splat. Uh, um, but specifically for running on the grid, stuff that's written in Ulam and Splat would be incredible. So, uh, that's it. It felt like, you know, I didn't have a whole lot to say, but, you know, of course I soak up all the time anyway. We'll see intertile stuff and bond stuff next week, hopefully, for sure. That's what I'm putting on myself. You have a good week. Hope to see you next week.